Hi everyone, welcome to Shakela Training Center. My name is Bruce. On my right over here we have Keegan. We're going to be doing a few demonstrations today on common rail diesel system on a few of the components. So basically what I'd like to start off with first is I'd like to give you a bit of an understanding of what common rail diesel is. In the past we had uh, vehicles, they're still, running uh, they're still running currently at the moment. We've got an old injection rotary pump over here and the pump over here was basically responsible for pulsing the injectors and opening them and closing the injectors. So the pump was responsible for most of the fuel supply in the system. What we have now is we'll now have a common rail diesel injection system and all it basically means is we have one common rail that feeds four injectors as you can see over here. The common rail is fed by a high pressure pump which you can see over here. This pump generally does not need to be timed like our old rotary pump that we have over here. What you'll notice about the injectors on your common rail diesel is that we have an electrical connection which in our old diesel systems we did not have. Basically what this means is that these electrical injectors are now controlled by your engine ECU which is your engine control unit and this would be the brains of your whole system whereas in the past the injectors were controlled by your actual pump. Now the frequent questions we get asked when we do our training is mainly about a few of the components which are the crankshaft and the camshaft sensors and the questions that are asked about these sensors is what is an inductive sensor and what is a hall sensor. So this is what we are going to be discussing today about these two sensors that you see over here and also a quite a frequent question that we get asked is how do I diagnose and test these injectors reliably? So what we're going to be doing today, we're going to start off with these two sensors over here. I'm going to be explaining and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on our laptop over here. We've got a universal oscilloscope and we are going to show you what these signals look like and how they actually work inside our vehicles. So without any further ado, we'll move forward to our diagnostic tester. The first sensor we're going to discuss is the inductive sensor. On this vehicle behind us, we have two types of sensors, one for the crankshaft and one for the camshaft. On the crankshaft, we are using an inductive type sensor. On the camshaft, we will be using a hall type sensor. Now the main difference between the two is the inductive sensor, it can produce its own voltage or energy. Whereas your hall sensor over here needs to be supplied a voltage from the engine control unit in order for it to work. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to look at the oscilloscope and we're going to look at the difference between the two different sets, sensors and what the pattern actually looks like. Um, Keegan, would you mind starting the vehicle for me please? Switch off please Keegan. What I want you to look at over here is here we have our baseline which is our x-axis which is almost on zero volts over here and what you'll see is a signal that is actually going above and below our x-axis. This means that this is an alternating current signal. Now what's very significant about the signal on a crankshaft sensor when you do your diagnosis is you'll notice that there's a gap in between over here. This gap represents the position of the crankshaft inside the engine. Based on that gap over there, the engine ECU will know exactly where the crankshaft position is in the actual vehicle. The next sensor we're going to look at is we are going to look at the hall sensor over here. It is a completely different type of sensor, although it looks very similar to your inductive sensor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the frequency of my machine. Keegan, would you kindly swap over the multifunction cables to the camshaft sensor? Now, what you're going to see over here is you're going to see as Keegan switches on the ignition, 
you're going to see this baseline voltage, which is at zero volts, which is my x-axis moment. It's going to peak to about five volts. And then as he starts the vehicle, you are going to see the difference in the signal as opposed to the signal that we saw just now. Keegan, switch on your ignition, please. There you can see it has spiked up to five volts over there, which means the ECU is supplying the voltage to the sensor now. Start the engine, please, Keegan. switch off. As you can see in this frozen image over here, here we have a hall sensor signal, commonly known as a square wave signal, another name called a PWN signal, which means pulse width modulation. Very simple to understand. It's similar to a pulse in your arm. We have a pulse of five volts. Then what we do is we have the width, how long is the voltage there for, and modulation meaning on and off. So here we have our on time, here we have our off time, and there again we have our on time. So you can see the difference between a hall sensor and an alternating current sensor, which is your inductive sensor. The main difference being the inductive sensor supplies its own voltage, whereas the hall sensor needs voltage in order to give a signal back. The next component I'd like to look at is the injector but not the injector as a whole. Specifically, what I want you to focus on is this leak-off port. Now, what this port is, is any excess fuel that comes into the engine is fed back up through the leak-off port and back through into the tank. Now, I get asked a question often, is there any way that I can test these injectors without a diagnostic machine that is reliable? And the answer to that question is yes. To test your injectors manually, you are unfortunately going to need some specialized equipment. Here we have some flow pipes over here. And over here, I have flow pipes over here. I've opted to use the bottles instead of the, the tubes for better visibility. Now, what you can see over here is I've taken off my return feeds over here, which actually fit into the leak-off ports that we were discussing earlier on. And as you can see over here, onto my pipes, I have connected these pipes into the leak-off parts of each injector. Now, what is gonna happen is as we run this engine, the excess fuel is gonna be pushed up these pipes and into the bottles. What we are looking for over here is we are looking to see that the injectors are actually sending fuel back through these pipes in a dripping manner. What we do not want to see is we do not want to see the, the diesel flowing into the bottles like a tap. We want to see drops falling. Now, we'll run the engine for about three to five minutes or according to your manufacturer specifications. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up the bottles and then we're gonna see the diesel dripping inside over there. And then we are going to measure the difference. As you can see on my bottles over here, I have got little stages of milliliters over here. And what we need to do is look at the comparison of the two of the four injectors over here and we need to see that these bottles are basically the same level. So what my assistant is going to do, Keegan is going to start the vehicle for me now and what you're going to see is you're going to see diesel dripping into these bottles over here. As you can see now, we've got diesel dripping into these bottles, but what we do not have is we do not have a constant flow as if the tap is switched on on high volume. If we have an injector that is flowing as if you have switched on your tap at home, that would indicate a sure problem with one of the injectors that is leaking back too much. You can switch off over here. As you can see, what we've got for demonstration purposes, I've got an injector that we've drained a bit over here where the injector bottle is not as full as the others. So that would indicate that these three are possibly okay, but this one over here maybe hasn't got enough leak off. Um, if we had a bottle that was filling right to the top, that would indicate that we have too much leak back on one of our injectors. Now, the reason why this is so important is 
if you have an injector that is leaking back too much, what it can actually do is it can call and cause a number of various problems, such as rough idle, poor performance, and in some cases, depending on how much the injectors are leaking back, it can even cause non-start. That concludes our demonstration for today. Thank you for watching. I hope that you've learned how to test your injectors manually with the flow meters, and also that you know the difference between an inductive sensor and a hall sensor. Hope to see you at Shikela Training Center soon.